Hello and welcome to the third video for visualeffectsforge.co.uk. We are going to be looking into planetary textures, which in this case are the shaders which make up the look of a planet. It's really dead simple to do. It's great fun if you're just in interested in the texturing side of things because you, you can effectively skip out modeling completely. The setup for this scene is, is really quite simple. What we need is we need three spheres, and each of these spheres we need to place a different temporary shader on. So the first stage is to create your first sphere. Now set that with a decent number of subdivisions on its axis and its height so that it's a nicely rounded sphere so that even when you get quite close to this sphere it's going to look pretty good and pretty rounded. So the first stage is to take your first sphere and duplicate it and then move that and then shrink it ever so slightly. It only has to be the smallest amount because what we're going to do is we're going to fit these spheres one into the other like Russian dolls. So we'll do that again. Move that there and shrink that ever so slightly. So first of all I'm going to use the quick menu, assign new material and create a temporary Lambert shader for each. So in this case we'll call the first one landmass. The second one, cloud layer. And finally, atmosphere. At this point it's now safe to snap all of these together by selecting them all, holding down X and moving them all to the center. You can see how the smallest and the largest are offset here by quite a bit. You, if you want to create a more accurate atmosphere, um, you're going to want to make these much closer together but I've exaggerated the uh, the displacement between the three of them here to, to demonstrate. Okay, so next what you're going to want to do is to actually find a texture to apply to the planet. I've provided a link in the info of this video to NASA's website and specifically the blue marble area of that website which has to do with some fantastically good photography uh, of the Earth from, from the upper atmosphere. They are incredibly good starting points on how to create a, a convincing looking lush world. They are very useful as a, as a resource. So what we do is we open up the hyper shade now. Drag that in. So we have our three textures here. Atmosphere, cloud layer and land mass. So the first thing to do to get the texturing started is to graph the network by holding right click down and graphing the network. What this does is it opens here in the work area. This allows us to keep an eye on how we're building the shader. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the land mass texture. This is by far the simplest. We click here to create a file node which automatically has a texture placement node on it. Now if we click on the file texture node, over here we have the input where that file is. Now I've gone ahead and downloaded these images and downloaded fairly low quality versions of them uh, from the NASA's Blue Marble website. So if I go through to where I've stored them, there are two files. One is the, the actual land mass and one's the cloud layer which we'll put in later. So if you double click on the image of the planet this is what you should see. Next what you want to do is you want to right click and hold from here this little arrow here and go to out color and the top option which is all three color channels. Hold right click on the actual shader itself and apply it to color. Now what you see here is that it's actually changed the, the preview of the land mass shader. Next we graph the cloud layer and we pretty much repeat the process with one difference. This time we select the cloud layer but instead of plugging it into the color we plug it into the transparency. What happens then is you end up with a semi-transparent shader which has a sort of gray cloud layer on it. Well clouds aren't usually gray from above so the quickest way to fix this is to go over to color and increase the color until it's white and then what you end up with is something that looks far more convincing as a cloud layer. 
Finally, the atmosphere shader. The way that an atmosphere shader works is that the outside of a planet is much more opaque than the inner area where you are looking, where the camera is looking directly towards it. This is called the Fresnel effect. Effectively, what it means is that the more particles of gas or water that you're looking through, the thicker and more opaque that will begin to look. So what we need to do for this is, is we need to connect this up to a special uh, shader node called the sampler info. What this effectively does is it picks up information from the camera that's being viewed through and then throws that information at the atmosphere shader, making it unique from every different camera point of view. Now we could, and this is the this is the best way to start off if you want to make things simple, we could just simply middle mouse click and drag from the sampler info to our atmospheric shader and click transparency. Now there are so many different outputs that come from the sampler info node that it can't automatically connect the two. So what you need to do is you need to go into what's called the connection editor and click to connect the facing ratio to the transparency of the node. Now you need to click R, G and B because those are the three channels and the whole of the transparency. Now what we find here, the outside of the shader is opaque, the inside is transparent. Now you can control this much better by using a color utility called remap value. We're going to use one of these for the glow anyway. So it's a very simple process to do to do it this way and what it does is it gives you much more control. We drag, middle mouse drag onto the remap and go to other. So it's again it's from the facing ratio and then it's to the input value of a remap value node which you can find under color utilities. And what this does is it allows us to change the way that the color and the facing ratio interact with each other. And then we export that out and onto the transparency of the object. So that once that's removed, it's exactly the same because we haven't changed anything here. But look what happens when I change this. What we end up with is much more opaqueness around the edge and then a sharper drop off towards the center. This is very, very helpful when building up an atmospheric shader because it gives you much more control than simply connecting a sampler info straight onto the atmosphere. Next what we need to do is we need to get the color to an approximate shade, so a sort of light blue, which we do simply by going into the color and we click on the color area here and we can we can for the sake of this we can just connect it to whatever color sort of gets the right atmospheric look for us and we can edit this so that the majority of the planet is transparent, the majority of the atmosphere for the planet, and the outside is much more opaque. But we need to duplicate this and create a second facing ratio node system because we want to control the amount of glow and where the glow is generated. So what you need to do is you need to click on the atmosphere shader and then middle mouse button from remap value onto glow intensity. Now what this allows us to do here, although we have to effectively we have to reverse the process. So white replaces black. Now at the moment white is way too strong for what we want. We actually want a pretty dark shade of grey because white in this case equals one and a glow intensity of one would be a very bright sort of effect. Now fiddle around with all of the different values. You should change the diffuse settings. If you alter the diffuse settings, what you're saying is that the brighter areas will get brighter, but the darker areas will remain darker. So just for experiment's sake, we'll put in 1.4, for example, and that brightens everything up quite nicely. If we've done everything right, we should now be able to go back to the scene by minimizing the hypershader. And if all has gone to plan, now this is literally just the, the first iteration of how to do this. Once you understand how to do this, you can go away, use better quality textures, take your time over producing 
the different layers of this and, and I will do a video later in which we'll look into more depth but uh, as we only have 10 minutes that's all the time that we've got 